Starting today, my parents are moving in with us, Emily. It's for this reason we got a five-bedroom house. If you understand, then hurry up and get ready. Okay, Tom. How could you decide this without telling me? Living together like this is definitely impossible. It's common sense for a wife to take care of her husband's parents, right? That's how it's always been. Just keep doing as I say, and since I'm supporting you, don't complain. On the day we moved into their new five-bedroom house, Tom declared with a smirk, tossing unthinkable words at his wife, who was completely fed up. Though she didn't show any surprise, she responded in a calm tone, You think it's a wife's job to take care of someone? Well, I'm not your wife anymore. Starting today, you'll have to find someone else to take care of you. Huh? You're not my wife anymore starting today. Are you saying you want a divorce? You can't possibly do that. Don't lie. You're just a housewife who can't do anything. Glancing around, several pedestrians were watching us, but Tom, unaware, was laughing loudly enough for everyone to hear. He really doesn't understand anything. I already know everything, but it would be better if he realized on his own. Whether I'm incapable or not, they regret it for sure. I was chuckling to myself and quickly grabbed a piece of paper from my bag to shut down Tom's laughter and make him frown. Emily, is this a joke? Do you even know what this paper is? Huh? It's a divorce paper, isn't it? Obviously, I know. Like I said, I'm quitting being your wife today. My name is already on it. You just need to sign it. I'll submit it, so you should be thankful, right? Thankful? Are you crazy? There's no way we can divorce without discussing it. My parents are arriving at our new house soon. Instead of wasting time with this silly joke, start unpacking and preparing the meal. Tom raised his voice super loud, scaring off everyone, and ripped up the divorce paper. My punch did the trick, though Tom was intimidating me with his glare. This wasn't anything new. I had already made up my mind and reached into my bag once more. Really, what a waste of paper. Next time, make sure to sign this properly. I had a feeling things could get messy, so I had a stack of divorce papers all signed and good to go. When I smirked, Tom's face got even redder. It seems like he's really annoyed that I didn't go along with what he wanted when I usually do. What's with you? Just because you can live in a new house, do you think you can celebrate? You know best what happens when you anger me, right? If you kneel and apologize now, I'll forgive you. If you refuse, then we're really getting a divorce. After all, I took you in when you had no relatives and no friends. Don't you feel any gratitude? What about it? Tom glared at me with eyes sharp as knives. Seeing that, I couldn't help but laugh again. By the way, it's true that I have no relatives or friends. Both my parents are no longer around, and I'm not great at making friends, so I only really chat with a few work buddies and my old boss from my job before I got hitched. It looks like you're not getting it by just reading. Come over. I'll show you in a way that you'll end up hating it. My husband was trying to pull me into the new house by grabbing my shirt, but I stayed calm and kept smiling. Is it okay to do this? Would it make your position worse? Look, your parents' car is here. Pointing at a car waiting at the traffic lights in front of the new house, my husband quickly let go of my shirt. He clicked his tongue and gave me a nasty look, but went back to his usual grin when his parents came out. Tom, something seemed off. Was there a problem? It looks like you were crapping, Emily. What were you doing? Actually, Emily says she doesn't want to live together and she even started talking about divorce. Look, she even handed me a divorce paper. I guess it's a joke, but it really got to me. Despite having looked furious just moments ago, my husband explained the situation nonchalantly, all smiles as if nothing had happened. He works in sales, 
and is one of the top performers at his company. Everyone acknowledges him as an excellent employee. I've heard about his numerous accomplishments, which make his smile all the more convincing. Emily, is it true that you don't want to live together? We don't want to force you. Could you tell us why, though? We heard from Tom that you suggested living together. We were so happy and even made preparations. And just to clarify, is there a mix-up? Don't worry, no hard feelings. Just let us know, all right? As usual, my in-laws asked with kind smiles and words, wanting to understand how I felt. They have been very supportive since the beginning of our marriage, always being there for me as I struggle to express my feelings. I'm truly grateful. That's why I became scared. If I reveal everything, it would mean repaying their kindness with betrayal. But I have to make up my mind. It's for my sake as well as for my husband and my in-laws. Kyle and Jackie, I'm going to divorce Tom. Therefore, I can't live with you both. This isn't a joke. I'm serious. Tom, what does this mean? M says she's serious. I can't believe she would lie. Please explain the situation so that it makes sense. No, no, Dad. Don't take her seriously. There's no way we're getting a divorce. Look, we even bought a new house. She's just mentally unstable because of the change in environment. Remember all those times when Emily was acting all over the place? My husband flashed his fake sales smile, but Kyle wasn't buying it. I had to take a deep breath and get ready for whatever was coming next. If I don't speak up now, no one will be happy. That would certainly upset my in-laws. Let's go inside then, the new house. For now, I'll continue talking there. All three nodded quietly, but my husband was exerting silent pressure with a look that said don't say anything unnecessary. We entered the new house and sat facing each other, my husband, me, and my in-laws. After taking a deep breath to steady myself, I began to state the facts. Tom hasn't mentioned anything about us living together. He's spreading lies about me suggesting we move in together. He's been threatening me to take care of you guys. My in-laws, who had maintained their smiles to avoid making me anxious, visibly changed their expressions. They were clearly perplexed, which was understandable. Tom never revealed his true self to his parents and was dedicated to his work in taking care of his parents. It seemed impossible that Tom, who had always been a model son, could do such a thing, but it appeared they were beginning to sense that I wasn't lying. I glanced at Tom, and he looked unhappy, although he seemed to be thinking about something. I knew what he was up to. He was probably thinking about how to persuade his parents. While I was observing, Tom began to speak slowly, sounding apologetic. I thought I had communicated about the living situation, but if it wasn't clear, then it's pointless. I'm sorry, Emily, I really am. But I haven't forced any caregiving onto you or threatened you to take care of my parents. I truly love you from the bottom of my heart. That's all I want you to understand. Saying this, Tom apologized. The confusion among my in-laws grew as they struggled with who to believe. Anger was welling up at me, not just for deceiving me, but for continuously deceiving his parents. But lashing out in anger would not work with him. I knew all his words were lies, so I took the next step. It's understandable that you both are shocked but Tom is definitely lying. Allow me to prove that. Could you please look at this? I pulled a brown envelope from my bag and presented it to my in-laws. Inside the envelope were several documents and a bundle of photos. The moment they checked the contents, my in-laws' faces turned pale. Is this? Are you saying Tom has been cheating? It can't be true, can it? Tom. What were you thinking? Indeed, what I had shown them was a report of the affair and the evidence photos. I started to question things when Tom kept missing birthdays and anniversaries because of his work trips. 
So, I decided to check his smartphone and computer and found messages that seemed to be from a woman. Moreover, when I followed him on this supposed work trip, I discovered it wasn't a work trip, but a romantic getaway instead. I thought about hiring a detective to gather evidence, but by then I had already figured out who the other woman was. Once I knew the identity of his mistress, I decided to investigate on my own. Just as I was about to explain this, Tom interrupted me. I'm not cheating. Maybe Emily followed someone who looks like me, or maybe. Maybe she's fabricated this with Photoshop. Anyway, it's not me. Mom, Dad, I would never do such a thing like that. No, Tom. It's hard to believe immediately with all this evidence. I don't want to believe that you would cheat, but this is... Well, the man in these photos is definitely you, Tom. It's unimaginable that Emily would make up lies like this. What are you both talking about? Please, believe in what I say. I don't even recognize the woman in these photos. And most of this evidence must have been collected by... Emily, right? She could just make things up. Look, Emily, tell them you were lying. My husband continued to pile on lies and excuses, intending to deny everything thoroughly. But the more he struggled, the more effective my next move would be. This development was within my expectations. Tom, you really don't know the woman in the photos. You can't take back those words, you know. Yes, I'm not lying. I don't know any women. Before Tom could finish his sentence, the doorbell rang. A visitor at our new house just after moving in. Everyone was wondering about it, but I was the only one who didn't think it was a service person. My husband tried to change the subject, but I ignored him, went to the entrance to greet the visitor, and led her to the living room where everyone was. Immediately, my husband's face turned pale. My in-laws repeatedly looked back and forth between the photos and the visitor. Tom, I'll ask you again. Do you really not know the woman in the photo? Is she the same person right here? Why? Why is Catherine here? Don't tell me, Emily, you. His eyes darted nervously, and he began to sweat profusely as he showed his greatest agitation of the day. It's understandable given that Catherine, his affair partner, was standing right in front of us, and I had invited her. In fact, I had Catherine wait near our new house. When I told my husband that I wouldn't live with him, there were a few bystanders around who were looking at us, including Catherine. She was positioned out of his sight, so he hadn't noticed her. It's confirmed then. Tom has been lying. By the way, I know Catherine very well. She's a former colleague of mine. I'm not good at socializing, and my colleagues and boss were pretty much my only conversation partners. Catherine was one of those colleagues. Although I've left the company, making her a former colleague, I knew her contact details and address. I conducted my own investigation into the affair without hiring a detective, because I could easily follow Catherine, and I decided that hiring a detective was unnecessary. Also, Catherine had informed me about Tom's plans to push his parents' caregiving onto me. Before Tom purchased the five-bedroom house, I was aware of his plans. He used to share everything with Catherine and looked down on me, but he probably never imagined that it would backfire in this way. Catherine, why did you just show up like this? You know it would be bad if you came, right? I was serious about marrying you, Tom. If you want to marry me to take care of your parents, I'd be happy to do so. That's why I came to tell your parents. Everyone except Catherine was dumbfounded, saying, what are you talking about? But Catherine was serious. It might seem insane, but it was a gesture of pure love for Tom. I got drawn to Catherine because she was so genuine, but I never guessed her innocence would hurt me in the end. Catherine's arrival had filled the new house with an awkward atmosphere, but it was my in-laws who changed it. Tom, does this mean everything you said today was a lie? Do you understand what you have done? I'm disappointed in you, Tom. Apologize to Emily 
and take responsibility. Depending on your answer, we might disown you today. Disown me? Mom, please wait. Dad, let's calm down, okay? Usually gentle and kind, my in-laws were so furious at their son that it looked like they were about to leap on him and start hitting him. They seemed like completely different people, not the calm ones who always listened patiently. I'd immediately noticed why they were angry. It was for my sake. Their kindness made them capable of feeling anger on behalf of others. Like Tom and Catherine, my in-laws could empathize and feel anger as if it were their own issue, and some of that anger was undoubtedly for the sake of their son. If they truly didn't care about someone, they wouldn't bother to get angry. They believed that their son would acknowledge his actions, apologize, and change his heart. Their hopes were easily crushed by Tom's next words. Oh, I'm tired of pretending. Now that everything's out, I don't care anymore. I guess I'll just divorce Emily, pay the alimony, and then remarry Catherine like you, Mom and Dad. Catherine says she'll live with you and take care of you. At that moment, a sharp snap echoed through the new house. When I looked towards the sound, Jackie was trembling. It was the first time I had ever seen her raise her hand to anyone. What are you even talking about? Do you not realize what you've done? Emily always said she was saved by you, Tom. She wanted to repay you. And what's this? You married her just to make her a slave and throw her away when you're done? Isn't that what family is all about? Mom and Dad, you were always too busy with work, leaving me to fend for myself, right? I chose the same sales job as you, Dad, thinking it was tough. But there's plenty of free time, enough even for affairs. Now, Mom, you quit your job and just live off Dad, so don't lecture me, you parasites. Tom hurled these nauseating words at his parents. My in-laws looked like they were about to strike him, but were frozen in place. They would never neglect him, but Tom felt that way. Perhaps my in-laws felt responsible for making their son feel lonely. Yet I could never accept Tom. I knew I shouldn't. As I prepared to say my last words to him, Insult me all you want, but don't go making your parents upset, okay? Just remember, what goes around comes around, and when you're in a tough spot, it might be too late for help. Just a friendly warning. Ah, uh, whatever, are we done talking? Hey, Catherine, I'm hungry. Let's go grab some food. Oh, and before that, I need to sign these divorce papers, Emily. Hand them over, and I'll get them filed, too. Tom, is it really okay? Your parents said they might disown you. It's fine, I have you, don't I? I can live without my parents. I tried to repay them by arranging a caregiver, but they just freak out. So forget it. They're idiots. Don't ever show your faces again. Saying that, Tom forcefully dragged Catherine out of the new house. My in-laws tried to follow but couldn't catch up as he quickly drove away, leaving them standing dumbfounded. Emily, we will make sure our son takes responsibility. Could you please wait a little while? If our son turned out this way because of us, it means we are to blame for your suffering. So no, that's not right. Tom made his own decision. It's his fault. Also, please don't worry. Tom will surely regret his actions. It will happen naturally, even if we do nothing. After conveying this, I said my goodbye to my in-laws, expressing my gratitude for their protection and apologizing for not being able to consult with them sooner and letting things come to this. It might have been the last time we'd see each other. A few days later, a call came before Tom. The voice on the other end was filled with despair I had never heard before. Emily, help me, please. I seriously didn't know anything. What you didn't know was that Catherine already had a husband, or that her husband was connected to the Mafia, and now he's after you for taking Catherine. Stop joking around. You knew all along. I didn't know anything. 
Why didn't you tell me? And it turns out Catherine's husband is a former boss from your company, right? You knew everything from the start. Correct. During my investigation into your affair, I ran into my old boss. And when I told him about Catherine's affair, he was furious. It seems Catherine didn't even know that her husband was connected to the mafia. She fled and ended up meeting you, thinking you could protect her. What? Catherine used me? No wonder I can't get in touch with her. This is ridiculous. If you lie to others, expect to be lied to back. But whatever, it doesn't matter. You'll always be on the run now. As I coldly laid out the reality to my husband, the voice on the other end of the phone went silent, the line dead quiet. Perhaps he was recalling my words. Still, all he could do was desperately cling on. I'm sorry. It was all my fault. I didn't mean to say such horrible things to you or my parents. I truly regret deceiving you, Emily. Please. He's your old boss, right? If you speak to him, maybe something can be done, right? Nothing can be done. People's feelings aren't that simple. Even if something could be done, I won't help you. I have only one wish, that you and Catherine fall into hell. Enjoy the worst life possible. Without waiting for a response, I hung up the phone and blocked him immediately. I could confirm any further details about my husband's life through my old boss, no problem. I intended to keep an eye on him until he fell into hell. Tom was forced to quit his job and vanished from his hometown. I heard from my old boss that even if he gets arrested, he will make sure Tom faces his responsibilities. It seems he intends to pursue him to the ends of the earth. I'm not going to kill him, just going to settle things, he said with a laugh. But his eyes weren't smiling at all, so I couldn't tell if he was serious or not. All I know now is that Tom cannot lead a decent life any longer. Unless Tom confronts himself and decides to change, it will be difficult for him to escape his hell. As for me, I moved to a small apartment and started living alone. However, I couldn't quite make a fresh start. Being divorced, I was alone again. Even though I was prepared, I couldn't hide my loneliness. I hated being so stuck and not being able to change anything, just having the same boring days. But then, one day, when I happened to look outside the window, I saw a car parked there. The car parked outside was one I had seen almost every day. I couldn't help but rush out of the house and stand in front of it. The door opened, and two friendly faces appeared. Hey, Emily, have you been well? Have you lost some weight? Are you eating properly? Kyle? Jackie? Why are you here? Today's our wedding anniversary. We were just about to go out for dinner. Do you have time, Emily? We want you to come with us. That's why we came to pick you up. Me? On your wedding anniversary? But Tom and I are divorced, and I'm a stranger to you both now. As I murmured this, looking down, my in-laws smiled gently at me and said, Legally, maybe. But to us, you're still our daughter. That is why we want our daughter to celebrate our anniversary with us. Like you, we don't have any parents either. We struggled a lot when we were younger, and unfortunately, that made Tom feel lonely too. We've decided we won't let our children feel lonely anymore. If you don't want to be our daughter, then as a friend is fine too, Emily. Won't you stay with us? At her words, Kyle nodded and smiled again. I couldn't see their faces clearly anymore as my eyes were filled with tears. How could I possibly refuse? I'm happy to be part of the celebration with you guys. Although Tom had changed, his parents remained the same throughout my marriage. It might have failed, but meeting them was something irreplaceable. Several years later, I remarried and was blessed with children. I couldn't have imagined remarrying when I got divorced, but thanks to Kyle and Jackie, I was able to look forward. 
I can never fully express my gratitude. Thinking of them, I was on my way to the restaurant with my family. Today was my own wedding anniversary in the same restaurant we visited that day. I cherished my happiness.